to work. Before I start blow drying her, we have to introduce our color technician for Paul Mitchell here today. His name is er Eric Charles Molkatov, and he's going to talk a little bit about Paul Mitchell the color and what was done on the stage this weekend. Eric, come on out. How's everybody doing? Can everybody hear me? Great. I'm so excited to be here. I'm watching the monitors from behind the cameras over here, and I'm, I'm seeing things come to life. And I'm listening very carefully to all the words that are being spoken up here. And the most beautiful thing for me in this industry is the ability to create the living art. And hair is that living art. And being a colorist, I key in on where do I want the color to live? And that's something that we keep hearing in Paul Mitchell, where do we want it to live? I want to bring out a model and I want to talk about some color because we're seeing a lot of living art here today. The most beautiful thing about modern elixirs, which is a great selling point for all of you guys, it's organically derived. That caters to my personal lifestyle, not just in the industry professionally, but my personal lifestyle. I live an organic lifestyle. There's so much pesticides in our world and pollutants and things. I do my part. I recycle. I buy organic food when I can. So here's something you can put to your clients, organically derived product artistically inspired. I want to bring out Diana, who was up here a little earlier. Carla did this amazing, amazing updo on her. I want to bring her out, and I want to explain her color. Woo, Diana! Everybody saw how long Diana's hair was? I love working on long hair, just as Carla does. As a colorist, that challenge of length, what can you do with it? What can you create with that? When we saw her yesterday, her hair was really, really long, and it had a lot of color going on in there. One of the challenges of working on hair of this texture and depth is what is it going to give back to you? Lack of a better word, we usually hear the word brass. We see that dark hair and that texture, and we get those orangey colors or those off tones. To me, working on hair like this is really beautiful. The secret to it is working with cool shades. If you're going to create a red on this depth of hair, work with your RVs. Those little blue guys are going to go after those little orange guys, and you're not going to have brass. What we did here, because of her skin tone, she came to us with a lot of gold and some of that more warmer golden yellow orangey colors, as well as her regrowth to keep along with that skin tone, because the marriage of skin tone, eye tone, hair texture, length, the architecture of the cut, the style, all comes together with color. So what we did is create a base color using Paul Mitchell the color, the permanent color, and we mixed together 4N and 4G with 20 volume to create rich depth at her new growth area. I wanted to work with the existing highlights and the existing colors that were in the mid lengths and ends. When Caller and I were consulting on where she wanted to go, she said, I want to see some of this bronze. Now, we all know color doesn't lift color. But we also heard Bill Peplo say, don't tell a hairdresser what to do. Huh. Well, don't tell a colorist <laughs> what to do either. I used to be Mr. Rules. You can't do this, you can't do... Now, I'm trying to play around with different things that I see when I'm out there with you guys. My biggest inspiration is what I see on a daily basis from you. And when I hear people are burnishing color, that's what we did here. Using a very simple technique, you've heard the name Scott Cole, Linda Yodici, Hair Color USA winners. That is like the Oscars, the Academy Awards of Hair Color. They've come up with a series of techniques called block coloring. Block coloring is taking regular highlighting out of its regular world and making it a little bit more exciting and less tedious. The most simplest form of block coloring is something called coal lights. What I did was, at the recession points on her head, just went straight back, like you would do when you do a regular highlighting in the crown, just straight back. And I went to where the crown broke. Everything below that section was the formula that we were talking about, that rich brown, that 4N and 4G with 20 volume. What I then did in that section here was I covered everything with foil so I have a nice clean working section here in the top. And we mixed together three colors. We did a 10WB with 40 volume. I didn't want to use bleach. 
I wanted to keep the integrity of the hair. I knew that I would get a burnished effect, and that's all these highlights that you see is putting a 10WB with 40 volume on top of pre-existing color. We know color doesn't consistently lift color, but we know that it does something. And we burnished that right into her hair using the coal lighting, which is the most basic foundation of the block color techniques. When you do a highlight and you put a foil in the hair, whether you slice it or weave it and you go straight back, normally you're leaving out a section of hair. In block coloring, you leave nothing out. Everything is colored from scalp to end. So your world is going to create the thinness or thickness of the section you want to see. For editorial work, we want to see more bold things. But in the salon, instead of taking a wider section, just take finer sections. So what we did for the three consecutive colors throughout that whole lighting section was the 10WB with the 40 volume to give that burnished look. Then I wanted to play around with the existing formula that was already there. I like to play with oxidation. I like to reformulate off of the different things that the client's hair gives us. So we did a 4N and a 6G with 30 volume, and then the base color is the 4N and the 4G with 20 volume. And what you have is a tapestry of depth and tone and dimension, and you can see that whether the hair was down or up like this. Thank you, Diana. Eric, while I have my, um, my finished model here, guys, you like it? Um, the lost art of not picking up a brush. <laughs> the lost art of not picking up a brush. If you want textured hair to be textured, don't make it so perfect. Use your fingers, use product, and it's a modern, new, fresh finger blow dry. I use textur texturizing balm as my, right after the haircut is done, to give me all the pieciness in here and to smooth out. Then I used a little bit of the, shine, the illuminating shine spray, which right now is our newest shine spray. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. I sprayed that throughout the entire head, and I used my fingers to get the feeling of the haircut. Really not about making it do what the, um, what the brush would do. So let Eric talk about your hair color, because it's absolutely special. Go Thank ahead. you, Tom. Beautiful, beautiful. Different I love all these makes really Different people but imagine the same technique on different people, different haircuts. They take on a life of their own. They grow and they live in different ways. So this was the same sectioning, that coal lighting, that straight back section. She came to us as a natural level seven with some eight and some nine highlights down on the bottom. Everything was pretty much grown out. We wanted some vibrancy, but we wanted to keep it extremely elegant. And, and that's the flavor of everything that I'm seeing. The simplistic natural look of elegant hair is my favorite part of the industry. There's so much going on with editorial work and avant-garde and trendy, which is a lot of fun, but your clients are coming to you every day for everyday looks. And someday I'd love to write a class or be part of a program called, you know, Runway for Every Day. And it's really easy to, to vision. Here's a perfect example. Elizabeth's natural level 7, 8 had the old highlights on the bottom. We wanted to warm it up because of her skin tone and her eye tone. So we created a base color of the 8WB, which is the warm beige. And we put a little bit of the 8RO, which is an eighth level blonde with some red orange. And we did 20 volume. I didn't want a lot of lift. I wanted to put in some really good depth. And that's what we created, this nice strawberry, warm kind of a blonde look. What we then did in this top coal lighting, again, no bleach. I wanted to work on the high lift blondes. I wanted to see where those can take me. And the high lift blondes work with a 40 volume cream developer. The beautiful thing about the Paul Mitchell color line is everything you need is right there. Semi, demi, and permanent high lift blondes and bleach, toners, ink works, all of that is right there for you in a very small working palette. You don't have to pull this from the shelf and mix that with this and figure it out, does my demi match my permanent? So you have so much diversity at your fingertips and that's what we created here by putting this coal lighting. Now, what I did differently in the section for Elizabeth, instead of coming just straight back with my sectioning, I actually just made a diamond on the top and still did the same thing, section after section after section of consecutive color, alternating a high lift neutral with 40 volume, and then I played around. I split her original formula into two separate things. Her original formula was 8WB with 8RO. I just split them so that we went 8WB, 8RO, high lift blonde. 
What I did right in the center was take the formula from the bottom and put it through the top just so it blends. Take the same technique, take those formulas, put them into neutrals and golds, and you're going to have a runway look for every day. Awesome. Beautiful. You look great, Elizabeth.